Well, welcome back. Uh, last week we talked about how when our families frustrate us or annoy us, um, we have the opportunity to, to show them the same patience that God shows us when we mess up. And you know what, every family feuds, but it's all about what to do or not to do when your family starts arguing. All families are different, but they all have at least one thing in common. Every family is made up of imperfect people, and that includes you. You know, it's one thing to, to show patience when, you know, family arguments are a result of, of family members being irritating, but it's far more difficult to show patience when our families go beyond simply frustrating us and instead hurt us. I don't know about you, but, you know, I found that <laughs> my family members are some of the hardest people to forgive when they hurt me. You know, it, it would be nice if forgiveness were something that we could do as quickly or, or easily as, you know, we snap our fingers. But you know what? The truth is forgiveness can be a challenge. The title of my message tonight is called The Cost of Unforgiveness. And I think we can all agree that forgiveness is not the easiest thing in the world. And of course, we all want to live in forgiveness, you know, for the people who have hurt us. But forgiving someone does not mean you have to allow them to continue to hurt you. You know, if there's anyone in your life who has hurt you not just once, but repeatedly, you can forgive them while still creating boundaries that prevent them from hurting you again. Look, there have been many times in my life where forgiveness was the absolute last thing that I wanted to do. And most of the time, you know, I was holding on to unforgiveness over something so ridiculous. Not too long ago, I went uh, to buy some essentials from the grocery store. And, you know, it's sad, but when it comes to grocery shopping, I'm like the most stereotypical guy that has no clue where anything is and wouldn't know the difference between, you know, a pasture-raised egg or an organic egg, you know, if it hit me in the face. To me, they're exactly the same. So Sarah usually does the shopping in our family, but, you know, if I'm coming home from work and she needs a few things, I'll swing by, you know, the store before I get home. And um, the other week, uh, she needed some, some cheese and a, a few things to make pizza that night. So I get there and everyone has their mask on. It's packed. You know, I'm feeling a little claustrophobic um, in my mask. And so I just want to get in, get out. Um, so I get a few items, but, you know, I'm feeling a little stressed. There's just so many people in the store right now. And so I finally get to the cheese. You know, I had no clue which cheese to get. Do I get organic? You know, why are there four, you know, levels of sharpness? What does extra sharp cheddar even mean? I was completely lost. So I, ca I call Sarah, no answer. I call again, no answer. By this point, I I'm getting really frustrated, right? I, I think I call her like 10 times and still get no answer. And so I'm so mad at this point that I don't buy any cheese and I just get in line with the items that I do have. And so I'm in line and Sarah finally calls me back. But I'm so mad that I just ignore the call and I leave the store without any cheese. I chose to stay mad and stay frustrated all because she didn't answer my phone. I chose to live in unforgiveness. Now, Sarah didn't do anything wrong, right? She was with our boys, her phone was on charge, but for some reason I felt justified in staying mad at her. So she made dinner that night with the little cheese that we did have in the fridge and guess who didn't have cheese on their pizza? That's right, it was me. See, the only person that my unforgiveness really hurt was me. Because I chose to live in unforgiveness instead of grace and understanding, I had to eat a pizza without cheese. You know, at first I thought, you know, refusing to forgive Sarah for not answering my phone um, when I needed her was going to teach her a lesson, right? I thought it would make, you know, me feel in control, like I was the good guy in the situation, but it didn't. See, sooner or later, we have to realize that by refusing to forgive, we only hurt ourselves. And so we all know it's difficult to forgive, right? The bigger the offense, the more difficult it is to forgive. But what if I told you there was something even more difficult than forgiveness? When we've been wronged, you know, the only thing more difficult than forgiveness is unforgiveness. When we refuse to forgive the person who, you know, has hurt us, we actually give that person power over us power that prevents us from finding healing. When we refuse to forgive, we become bitter, resentful, untrusting. 
Our unforgiveness cost us something. Our, our unforgiveness cost other people something too. When, when we refuse to forgive others, we damage our relationships you know, with the people who are holding gr- grudges against. Um, and so when we live in, in unforgiveness toward our family members, we, we cause damage to relationships we can never replace because we can never re- replace our families. But there's another way uh, our unforgiveness costs others something when we refuse to forgive. We rob the world uh, of what could be an incredible demonstration of the love and forgiveness of Jesus. And so I want to take a look at something the Apostle Paul wrote in Colossians. Colossians um, 3 13 says, Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other just as the Lord has forgiven you. So you also must forgive. And so I want you to notice the the, the last part of this verse where, where Paul tells us why we should forgive each other. Because God first forgave us. We can forgive because we are forgiven. When we forgive the people who have hurt us, it reminds the whole world, including the people who hurt us, of God's goodness and grace. I mean, that's just incredible. When we forgive, it puts everyone around us on notice the goodness of God. It's not about us. It's not about winning an argument. When we forgive, the world is reminded of who God is. And so I want to flip um, to Ephesians, um, Ephesians 4.32. It says, And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. And so throughout all of human history, people have been hurting God, right, with their sin, their disobedience, but he continues to offer forgiveness through Jesus. God forgave us by by giving up his own life on our behalf. While he hung dying on a cross, he even said, Father, forgive them. His dying thoughts were not saving himself, but on forgiving us. So when God says to forgive others like he has forgiven us, he's saying we have to die on a cross in order to extend forgiveness to our families. I mean, no, not a literal death, um, but a spiritual one, right? Jesus says that, his way is the way of, uh, of selflessness, humility, and death to self. Jesus said in Luke 9.23 that if anyone wants to follow him, they have to deny themselves and take up their cross daily. You know, Jesus' way is about giving up things we used to think were, we were entitled to. You know, even sometimes an apology. Sometimes when, when we're wronged, it means we're called to offer forgiveness even to people who aren't sorry. Maybe that that doesn't seem fair, but if you want to talk about fairness, don't forget to consider how unfairly God has treated you. The forgiveness God has shown you is undeserved, beyond comprehension, right? It's not fair, but that's grace. It's scandalous. And so God forgave the worst in you, in, in part so you could learn to forgive others. So following Jesus isn't about, you know, believing what he said. It's about following his example, And don't forget what he said a few moments ago. Unforgiveness costs you something, but forgiveness sets you free. So when you extend forgiveness to a family member who's hurt you, even if they've never apologized, you're not just doing it for them, right? You're doing it for you too. So forgiveness, it really is a big deal to God. It's such a big deal, in fact, that um, the word forgive is mentioned a hundred times in the Bible. And so... This is, God's forgiveness just compels us to forgive others. Um, you know, when a family member hurts us, we can remember that God forgave us first. His incredible forgiveness um, just emanates in our lives. And so Paul's advice about forgiveness probably doesn't come naturally to any of us, right? It's not easy to forgive people who've hurt us, especially if those people are, you know, family members, people close to you. Um, By setting your mind and heart on the things of God and and asking for help from the Holy Spirit, you can forgive your family in the same way that God has forgiven you. No matter how much you've hurt him, God still moves towards you with forgiveness. 
right? Now, he calls you to be an imitator of him by moving towards your family with that same forgiveness. Whether it's your mom, whether it's your dad, you know, a brother, sister, cousin, here's what God's calling you to do. Forgive your family like God forgives you, quickly, freely, repeatedly. And so, for just a minute, I want you to reflect on who in your family, in your life, you may need to forgive. You know, chances are you've probably been thinking about a particular person um, this entire message, but I want to encourage you to, to talk to God about them right now. You know, acknowledge your role in, in this conflict that you have. Um, and just own that, you know, we're not, we're not perfect. And just ask it if you need, ask God if you need to ask for forgiveness and, and you know, tell God you want to forgive the family members who hurt you and, and ask for his help. Remember, forgiveness is a process. It's not something that just happens instantly. So just be ready to show yourself some grace and, and you know, in this journey and just be authentic in, in forgiveness. And so ask God to show you, you know, if reconciliation is, is even possible um, and just, you know, reach out. Go towards your family. Don't run from them. God goes, goes towards you, right? God doesn't run from you when you make mistakes. He runs towards you. So look, the people in your life during this quarantine, run towards them. Don't hide. Don't, don't just stay in your room. Don't just stay isolated. Fix the conflict in your life. Fix the conflict in your family, right? Because God, God chases after you even when you make the biggest mistake of your life. God is still chasing after you. So look, chase after the people in your life. Forgive people. Ask for forgiveness right? There's so much joy in forgiveness. Remember that, that staying in unforgiveness, it almost always has this huge cost. And most of the time, it ends up hurting you way more than the other. So guys, just, just remember this thought of just God chasing after you. And, and remember that, you know what? You got to chase after the people around you. So Look, love you guys. Um, we'll see you guys next Thursday right here.